Hi, I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up Styles for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I'm here in August 2014 with my contribution to the Designer Challenge. Now this month we're using the character dice, and I'm using Poppy the Owl for my card, but I also want to take this video as an opportunity to teach how to use the new Spiral Circle Pull Card die. So before we get into my card, let's talk about the basics for using this die. Now when it comes, it's still all going to be connected together with little connection threads, and you're going to snip those threads to remove the individual dies, like I did for that heart there. What did I use? The Elizabeth Craft Designs die snips and the die file set to file down any sharp nubs. And then you're going to be left with all those individual dies. Now when you're deciding what size paper to start with, you always do the height of the paper to your desired card height. So if I'm making an A2, I'm going to go ahead and cut my strip of paper to five and a half inches tall. And then the width is where you need to add some. You just add three inches to your finished card size. So for example, if you'd like a finished A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, you should start with seven and a quarter by five and a half. You need to create a center fold so that you have something to align to. And then there are little alignment nubs on the top and bottom of the spiral circle pull card die, and you'll use those right over the fold of the card. Now, if you're using a pattern paper that has a direction to it, like say some words, just make sure that the circle is aligned on the left side of the card's interior. Now, after die cutting, you're just gonna fold that right back in half again. And how easy is this? Just back fold right around the circle. And it does have a little score line in there that's been made by the die. Another fun feature of the spiral circle pull card is that it always cuts these little closures into it, these little tuck slots that will go right over the edge of your card to keep it closed. And that way you don't get an accidental reveal. When you want to open it, you still just pull. It'll disengage the tuck slots and the card will open. You can always change your card size. That's the beauty of this die. So here's one that I wanted to finish up at 6x6. Six six. So I started with a 9x6 card, went through the same exact procedure, lined the die up over the center fold, fold back in the center, back fold against the circle. It still has those little tuck slots to keep it closed. And you might notice that I actually slid the die up the fold a little bit so it's not exactly in the center. And that is also your choice. Now without the spiral, it's just a standard flip card, and you can either cut that spiral in at the same time when I was cutting the card, or I can use the circle die that comes with the set to nest together with the spiral to cut it as a separate piece. And then after doing that, I just want to make sure that my glue is only on the outer circle that surrounds the spiral. That way the spiral can still engage and pop up and pop down inside the card. So I'll just use a little glue around the perimeter, glue that right inside the card, and then as far as attaching the other end of the spiral, it's so simple. Just add a little miniature glue dot right in the center of the spiral, and then just simply close the card against the spiral. It really is just that easy. Now anything that gets attached to that spiral is going to now pop up in the air as the card is opened. And because of those little tuck slots, you don't get an accidental reveal. Nobody knows that there's a pop-up inside there until you pull it open. Here's a decorated sample. It's actually the one on the packaging, a finished A2 card where there are all the little balloons flying on the spiral. The designer challenge team is just amazing, quite talented, these ladies. They're from all over the world, and a few of them have sent me in some spiral circle pull cards that I can use as samples in my classes and also here on the video. This first one is by Helen Cryer, and here she's just made a standard flip card, but she's used the spiral to make 3D roses. Next, I'll show you just a few samples of how the new clock and gears die will fit perfectly on the spiral circle pull card, and then of course the gears look great flying on the spiral. You see here on this card by Frances Byrne that she cut both the clock and the gears out of shimmer sheets, and that just looks fantastic. And then here's one by Shelley Hickox, some really, really beautiful detailing on the clock gears, and she decorated the little tuck slots as well. That's something that a lot of the designers have been doing. When you put large items on the spiral, they're going to be viewable in the closed position like you see the holly peeking out on Kelly Booth's card, and then it flies when the card is open. So that's really kind of a fun thing about the spiral circle pull card is the motion that you get. Here's one where Kelly has also embellished the tuck slots with some little pearls and then added these fun little envelope mail details to the spiral inside the card. 
with pop-it-ups, you're always choosing your placement along the fold as well as the location of those folds because you choose your card size. So Raquel Mason chose to use a cool gatefold card here where she staggered the location of the pull cards and she made the 3D roses with the spirals. Another option rather than doing gatefold would be to do waterfall. So in that case, you're just going to add an extra fold in the card further on down the line and you could just keep waterfalling them. The longer your paper is, the more waterfalls that you could put in the card. Okay, time to make this fun Poppy the Owl, I Will Always Love You card. I've decided on a 5 by 6 inch finished card, which means I need to start with 8 by 6, score it up the middle for folding, line up the alignment nubs right on the fold of the card. And you'll notice I slid that up a little bit so that I have a little bit more room at the bottom than the top. Now if I wanted a spiral that was cut out of paper, I could just put the spiral die right in the center there and cut it. But I would like to make the spiral out of a transparency. So for my flipping card, I want just a big window out of the middle of my circle. So I've nested in the decorator circle die that comes with the set and cut that at the same time. Folding it is the same as what you saw in the basics part of the video. Just fold it right back in half again and then just back fold right next to the circle. And it really is just that easy to make a little flipping card and in this case it now has a nice big window out of the center of the circle. I'm going to add just a strip of decorative washi tape right across the bottom of the card and then just trim off the ends to fit. For this card I thought it would be fun to have a tree inside that was decorated with hearts. So I'm using my All Seasons Tree Die and what I did is I stamped and embossed a wood grain pattern on one piece of cardstock and then just used plain cardstock for the other two layers and then just glued them together so that I would have a nice thick tree to put inside the card. Now after adding all my glue, in terms of placement inside the card, I want all the branches to be somewhat centered in the circular opening, which really means I'm going to have to tuck the trunk up underneath that tuck slot just a little bit. It shouldn't be a problem with the card opening and closing though. What would be a problem though would be any branches that would cross the fold, so I'll go ahead and prune those right off with my scissors. And now I can just check and make sure I like what I'm seeing through the window, which should be all of the branches of the tree. And the trunk will be hidden when the card is closed. But the tuck slots are still workable. You can still engage those tuck slots to keep the card closed. I want to make myself now a little transparency spiral piece, but the circle that comes with the die set I used already to cut a window. So if I used that for the spiral, it would just fall right through the window. Instead, what I need is a three inch circle, and that is the size of the spiral circle die itself. I would just need to use it twice, once to cut one half of the circle and once to cut the other half. But as it turns out, I have another die that is a three inch circle, and that is the circle die that comes with the clock and gears die. So if you had that die, you wouldn't have to do the two step process. You could just nest the spiral into the circle and cut it as a set. I'm sure that glue would work with the transparency, but I'm a little bit impatient and I don't like to sit there and wait for glue to dry against that slick plastic. So instead I'm going to use a dry adhesive, in this case just some small glue dots, and I'm just picking them up and putting them around the perimeter of that circle so that then I can put the transparency on it sticks right away. Now the inside part, which is the spiral, that will just kind of drop right through the window and I'll be able to attach that inside the card in just a little bit when I'm ready to get that spiral engaged. For now though, I would like to cut a little ring to cover the little area of transparency that I just put that adhesive on. So I'll go back to my three inch circle that came from the clock and gears die and the smaller circle that came with the spiral circle pull card die, nest those two together, and then I'll be able to cut myself a ring that will perfectly fit the ring that's visible behind the transparency. And again, I'm just gonna use dry adhesive. Okay, time to get this spiral working so I can start decorating it. I need a mini glue dot right in the middle of the spiral on the inside of the card. Then I hold that flat, press the card right against the spiral, and then when it opens it will have attached it in exactly the right position. The spiral circle pull card also comes with several little embellishment items that will work on the spiral, including this nice size little heart. And so what I've done is I've cut a whole bunch of them just out of some cardstock, sanded it a little bit, and kind of inked the edges. And now what I'm going to do is I've laid out about six of them on the front of the spiral where I think they'll look nice in the closed position. Then I'm going to pick up each one and I'm just going to add a small glue dot 
to one section of the spiral that's behind that heart. So it can only stick to one little section of the spiral or else the spiral won't open anymore. So it doesn't really matter which one, I just gotta choose one. So what I'm doing is I'm placing my hearts based on how they're gonna look in the closed position first. I've got my hearts laid out on the front of the spiral. They're each attached to only one section of the spiral. And then all I have to do is just open that card right up. It'll just pull that spiral open. And since each heart is only attached to one section, it'll pull the hearts through the spiral into the right position. Now I'll take another six hearts and put them through my little Xyron X sticker maker to quickly make them into little sticker hearts. And I can attach one of those little sticker hearts now to the back side of each one of the hearts that are on my spiral. That will basically sandwich that heart around the spiral so that it looks good in both positions, even if it flips over when the card is open. I really wanted to give an illusion of like an explosion of hearts in this card. And so the way I did that is I added a second set of hearts flat against the tree, glued to the inside of the card, but lined up with the hearts that are on the spiral. So in the closed position, you really only see those six hearts. But then when you open it, of course, each one seems to have multiplied. And then for further embellishment, I just added some of the small hearts randomly to a few of the hearts using the one from the Poppy the Owl die set. Okay, the character die that I'm using is Poppy the Owl, and you can see it here. I've assembled it using all the pieces that come with it. And I also added a second little set of feet to the back. And that way, when I sandwich my second poppy on the back, the feet will line up. What I'm using for the eyeglasses are the Props 1 die set. That's where the eyeglasses came from. And the only other thing I did is I left one of the wings on each owl up. I didn't glue it down to the shadow layer so that I'd be able to tuck in those little pencils later on. Okay, if I engage at least one of my tuck slots, that'll hold that card closed enough where I can really check my positioning on my first owl. And I want it over here somewhere where I can attach it actually to the circle so that it will lift up and open when the card is open. And I'm only gonna use a little glue along that red ring circle. That's all I wanna do to attach this poppy. And the reason I can use just such a little bit of adhesive is I'm just trying to hold it in place for now until I can open it up and then I'll be able to sandwich the other poppy on the back side. And for that one, I'll be able to use glue not only in the little ring area, but then all over the back of poppy. So that will be nicely sandwiched together and shouldn't really move once I get those two in place. Now I've got this cool card where you can see Poppy in the closed and the open position. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my greeting in the card. Now what I did is I found this stamp, I will always love you, I just thought it was great for this card. But what I wanna do is I wanna have Poppy obscuring that greeting until the card is open. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna place it sticky side up right on the top of the owl and then close the card against it. And that way it'll transfer it over to the other side of the card, but I know that Poppy will cover that when the card is closed. And the last little bit of decoration I did was just to use some of these pencils that were part of the pattern paper. I just fussy cut them out. And I used a couple of them tucked underneath Poppy's wings so that that would also sort of anchor him to that inside of the card. And I just made sure I avoid the area where my little tuck slot was. When folded up, this card is five inches by six inches, so it'll fit in an A7 envelope and mail for a single stamp. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer. You can get buying information for the dies at ecraftdesigns.com and there are clickable links to each of the supplies in the About section below this video. You can always check my blog for more pop-up ideas, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.